Welcome to uh, this deep dive into Stoic wisdom. We're going to be um, exploring the teachings of Zeno of Sidium. He's a philosopher whose ideas have, well, they've really stood the test of time, haven't they? Thousands of years later, and we're still grappling with them. It's amazing, isn't it? Like these little nuggets of wisdom that have survived all these centuries. It's like he's speaking to us directly, even though, and this is fascinating, we only have fragments of Zeno's actual writings. Right, it's like piecing together a puzzle, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. We're trying to understand his philosophy through a collection of his most, I guess you could say, powerful quotes. And these aren't, you know, just abstract sayings. These are insights that can really, I think, change how we see the world. Absolutely. Zeno was all about practical philosophy, giving people advice they could actually use in their lives. Like this one, we have two ears and one mouth, so we should listen more than we say. You know, it's funny how relevant that still is today. It's so true though, isn't it? And he really drives the point home because he also said, the reason why we have two ears and only one mouth is that we may listen the more and talk the less. And it's like, That's okay, Zeno, we get it. Right, why the double emphasis? What do you think he was getting at there? I mean, it seems pretty straightforward, right? Well, I think for Zeno, listening wasn't just about being polite, you know? It was actually a pathway to self-mastery. Self-mastery, that's an interesting way to put it. Right, because think about it. How often do we say or do things impulsively that we end up regretting later? Oh, all the time, right. It's like the minute the words leave your mouth, you're like, why did I say that? Exactly. The Stoics believed that learning to master our emotions and impulses, that was the key to living a fulfilling life. Mm. And what better way to practice that self-control than by, you know, pausing, listening, trying to understand before we speak or react. It's so true. And it makes you think about all those times you hit reply all in an email in the heat of the moment. Oh yeah. And it's not just about like avoiding mistakes either. Mm -hmm. Imagine how much stronger our relationships would be if we all just practice that kind of deep listening. Oh, absolutely. Less misunderstandings, more empathy. Right real connection totally and you know it reminds me of another quote from Zeno he said man conquers the world by conquering himself I feel like that ties into this idea of listening oh 100 percent that inner battle you know against our more impulsive selves that's really at the heart of stoic philosophy it's like by listening to others we're also listening to a deeper part of ourselves you know Exactly. And from that foundation of self-mastery and deep listening, Zeno believed we could then start to understand this much larger concept of living in agreement with nature. He actually thought it was the goal of life. Right. His famous quote, the goal of life is living in agreement with nature. Although I have to admit that one's always seemed a little bit, I don't know, vague to me. <laughs> what did he mean by nature with a capital N? Yeah. It's a question a lot of people have. For Zeno, nature represented the rational order of the universe you know, the underlying logic and reason that governs everything. So it's less about like hugging trees and more about understanding the fundamental laws of existence. You got it. It's about recognizing that there are things we can control, you know, our thoughts, our actions, our reactions. And then there are things we can't control like the weather or other people's opinions, traffic. It's about accepting things as they are, wouldn't you say? Precisely. And that's where I think a lot of Zeno's wisdom is actually really freeing. You know, it's about understanding that true freedom comes not from trying to force the world to bend to our will, but from aligning ourselves with the natural order of things. That makes me think of another quote where he uses this kind of striking analogy. He said, when a dog is tied to a cart, if it wants to follow, it is pulled and follows, making its spontaneous act coincide with necessity. But if the dog does not follow, it will be compelled in any case. So it is with men too. Even if they don't want to, they will be compelled to follow what is destined. It's quite an image. It is a little jarring, but I think it speaks to a really profound truth about what it means to be human, you know? It's like he's saying, we can either choose to go with the flow, accept the things we can't control, or we can resist and get dragged along anyway. Right, and either way, we end up in the same place, but the experience is totally different. It's like he's telling us to be, I don't know, active participants in our own destiny, even when things are happening that are totally outside of our control. Yeah, it's about finding that balance between action and acceptance. Like realizing that true freedom comes from choosing how we respond, even when, it, you know, even when things don't go our way. But to really accept things, to align ourselves with nature like that, it takes a certain kind of knowledge. And that brings us to another really interesting part of Zeno's philosophy. 
his ideas about how we acquire knowledge. And he wasn't one for just like sitting around lecturing people, was he? No, not at all. Zeno was all about practical demonstrations. Like that one where he illustrates the stages of knowledge using just his hand. I've always loved that one. Oh yeah, classic Zeno. Taking a complex idea and making it, you know, totally tangible. Exactly. Can you walk us through it? Okay, so picture this. Zeno's standing in front of the students, right? He stretches out his arm, palm open, and he says, this is perception. That initial sensory experience, like just pure, unfiltered data coming in. Exactly. But that's just the first step. Then Zeno, he kind of curls his fingers in a little bit, like he's gathering something up. And he says, this is a scent. So that's where we decide what to believe, right? Yeah, we're not just passively observing anymore. We're making judgments. Do we accept this perception or not? And that's where things can get tricky because our biases and our fears can really distort things. Totally. And Zeno actually talks about this directly. He said, nothing is more hostile to a firm grasp on knowledge than self-deception. It's true, though. We can be our own worst enemies when it comes to, you know, seeing things clearly. But luckily, Zeno gives us a way to move through that stage of ascent. He does. He closes his hand into a fist and says, this is comprehension. We're not just accepting or rejecting information at this point. We're digging deeper, trying to understand the why. We're connecting it to everything else we know. Right. We're starting to see the bigger picture, and that brings us to the final stage. He closes his other hand around that first fist. Yes. And he says, this is knowledge. Such a powerful image. It's like having a firm grasp on something, a deep understanding that can really guide our actions. And I think it's interesting to notice the progression here. It's not about blindly accepting everything we perceive. Right, or rejecting everything that challenges our beliefs. Exactly. It's a process of observation, critical thinking, and then integration. Cultivating curiosity, but also discernment. Absolutely. Yeah. And this kind of knowledge, for Zeno, it was essential for living in agreement with nature. It's like, you can't align yourself with something if you don't understand how it works. Exactly. But Zeno didn't see this pursuit of knowledge as a solitary thing. You're right, he also talked about the importance of connection. He said, all the good are friends of one another. It's interesting how he links those two things together, goodness and friendship. Right, yeah, it's not just about like, who we hang out with on the weekends, mm -hmm. right? It's about something, well, something deeper. People who challenge us to grow, who share our values. Exactly. Zeno believed that a true friend, it's like a mirror. Reflecting back our, yeah our strengths and weaknesses, helping us see ourselves more clearly. He actually called a friend our alter ego. Wow, that's a pretty powerful way to put it. It's like true friendship. It's not just superficial. It's, I don't know, it's essential to how we understand ourselves. Exactly. It's about surrounding ourselves with people who, you know, who want to be better, who want us to be better. And, you know, it's interesting because even though stoicism talks a lot about like self-control and inner strength, it's not about I don't know, becoming some kind of like emotionless robot. No, not at all. The Stoics recognize that we're social creatures. Yeah. You know, we need connection. Right. They actually believed that true happiness or eudaimonia, as they called it, came from living in accordance with that nature, like mm -hmm. embracing both our rationality and, you know, our need for connection. So it's not about denying our emotions or isolating ourselves. It's more like choosing who we spend our time with carefully cultivating those relationships that help us grow. And you know, it's interesting how all these different threads that we've been talking about, self-mastery, living in agreement with nature, the importance of knowledge, friendship, it all seems to come together to create like a blueprint for a good life. Absolutely, it all ties together. And there's this other quote from Zeno that I think really sums up this idea of stoic joy. He said, happiness is a good flow of life. I love that quote. It's not about chasing, you know, pleasure or some kind of external reward. It's about finding a sense of peace, I guess, in the journey itself. Exactly. And I think when you look at the things we've talked about today, it all contributes to that. Mm -hmm. Showing up as our best selves, facing challenges with grace, you know, staying open and curious, realizing that true fulfillment, it doesn't come from what happens to us, but from how we choose to respond. It's about becoming like masters of our own fate, but not in a controlling way. It's more about, like you said, how we respond to the things that happen to us. It's like Zeno's giving us this roadmap. A roadmap, a compass, a wise friend. I think his ideas offer something for everyone, really. Yeah. Anyone who's trying to live a more meaningful life. Yeah. Well, as we wrap up our deep dive into Zeno's wisdom, it's pretty amazing how relevant his ideas still are, you know? 
thousands of years later. I know, it really makes you think. It does, and it reminds us that this search for wisdom, it's a journey, not a destination. And one that, thanks to Zeno, we can undertake with a little more, I don't know, wisdom and a little more grace. Thanks for joining us on this exploration of Stoicism. We hope you'll take some like a metronome, life ain't no paradise. Swimming dust in catacombs, mind steel clad, heart calm amidst the cyclone. Strength in the stillness where my scars as a keystone. Stoic sword slice through chaos, never once deterred. Struggle force the iron will, silence is preferred. Pillars patience, wisdom's echo never slurred. Battlegrounds rage and virtues blaze undisturbed. Vice is tempted, whispers in the midnight. Virtue's lantern, cutting through the dark night. Battle rages, yet I'm standing on the zen height Stoic vision, crystal clear, guiding through the fight Running through the gauntlet, fire in my veins Burn, pain a teacher, lessons hedged pages that we turn Fortress of the mind, no retreat, no concern Virtue steady beacon, storms I discern Running through the gauntlet, fire in my veins Burn, pain a teacher, lessons hedged pages that we turn Fortress of the mind, no retreat, no concern Virtue steady beacon, storms I discern Against the current, standing tall, never bent World spins frantic, I refuse to relent Timeless wisdom flows every single event Stoic calm, unyielding life's true testament Weight of a thousand trials, break chains ascend Mind over matter, wounds men start again Clarity and silence, where's the anger transcend Stoic path, unshaken and till do, the very end Watch successful people and do what they do invest in you learn something that can help you to begin to make the adjustment to the changes that's taken place in the economy we, we have conveniences now that we've never had before you can order food to your house organic why because that's what time it is when I was a kid, you got an elevator, there's a person there that asked, what floor please? And then technology came and it eliminated that person. We're going through something that's always been with us. Creative destruction. Something that was created to take over a certain position and it destroyed what was there. That's been going on for a long time. That didn't just happen. They have technology to teach people how to speak yes i want to see that artificial intelligence tell you their story and, and touch your heart and tell you the things that they've gone through and the setbacks they've had and what it means to be hungry and how they got fired from the job you want to position yourself that what you bring is unique what you bring is indispensable technology don't have a heart bet on you invest in you majority of people are not going to make it reverend ike was right the best thing to do for the poor is not to be one of them most people because they're lazy because they're are not willing to learn they're hoping that the government will save them because of fear because of doubt they're stuck and many of them waiting on God. And God is waiting on them. There's a different If it keeps you happy, keep it quiet. The snow goose needs not bathe to make itself white. Neither need you do anything but be yourself. Respect yourself and others will respect you, Confucius. Anyone who stops learning is old, whether at 20 or 80. Anyone who keeps learning stays young. Obstacles aren't roadblocks, they're road signs. It's never crowded along the extra mile. Wayne Dyer Stoic life. Simply defined, Stoicism is the endurance of pain or hardship, without display of feelings and without complaint. Stoicism is a human response to challenge made possible by the fact that we are not merely the byproducts of our circumstances. We are all thinking, self actualizing beings who have the ability to selectively influence our emotional responses. 
which in turn shapes how we view the world, ourselves, and others. Stoicism is known as an eudaimonistic theory from the Greek eudaimonia, roughly meaning happiness or flourishing. This is meant to be the culmination of human endeavor, or end, telos, which the Stoics defined as living in agreement with nature. Nature is itself a complex and multivalent concept for the Stoics, which in turn means their definition of the goal or final end of human striving is very rich. For example, their idea of living in agreement with nature can also be explained as taking a deeper look into those situations that you can control and those which you cannot. Realizing the need to let go of what you can't control and accepting the facts rather than fighting results in a more harmonious, balanced, and thoughtful life. In modern times, living in agreement with nature means making a conscious effort to make the best of a given situation while being at peace with what you cannot change. You have got to be home. See, most people don't understand what's in you, the presence of God that makes you more than a conqueror. That's what's in you, God in you, your hope of glory. To manifest that, you gotta step out of line. If you wanna be successful, watch successful people and do what successful people do. And so I'm saying to you, you have something special. You have greatness in you. Do what works. You know, I was at this event, and this guy spoke, and, and he was so boring, he just put me to sleep. The room was as quiet as a graveyard between funerals. They gave him polite applause. And I said, man, that guy was boring. Well, I didn't know I was seated next to his brother-in-law. And his brother-in-law got a little attitude. Said, well, you ought to be that boring and make the kind of money he made. I said, well, how much he made? He said, $5,000. I looked at my watch. I said, he only spoke for about 45 minutes to an hour. He said, that's the kind of money they make. I said, whoa, I can do that. Some of that money's got my name on it. Have you ever seen somebody do something and you say, whoa, if they can do it, I can do it. If you're going to make it today, if our children are going to have a future, we got to do what these young millennials say. Stay woke. This is the time to step up. This is the time to be actively engaged in finding ways in which you can use your talents, your abilities, and your skills to build a place for yourself in this new economy. When I was fired from radio, I had to find another way to use my talent, to use my voice, to take care of my family. I had to be willing to learn something new. If you do what works, then that is follow the money. And if you're willing to learn something new, the possibilities are unlimited. Live your life so that when you die, the world cries and you rejoice. Keep your words true. Keep your heart kind and keep your actions necessary. There is no path to happiness. Happiness is the path. Buddha. The best way to keep one's word is not to give it. If you change your mind, you can change your life. The mind can go in a thousand directions, but on this beautiful path I walk in peace. With each step, the wind blows. With each step, a flower blooms. Thich Nhat Hun. When you are about to undertake some task, remind yourself what sort of business it is. If you are going out to bathe, bring to mind what happens at the baths. There will be those who splash you, those who will jostle you. Some will be abusive to you, and others will steal from you. And thus, you will undertake the affair more securely if you say to yourself from the start, I wish to take a bath but also to keep my moral character in accordance with nature. Do likewise with every undertaking. For thus, 
if anything should happen that interferes with your bathing, be ready to say, Oh well, it was not only this that I wanted, but also to keep my moral character in accordance with nature, and I cannot do that if I am irritated by things that happen. Unfortunately, she was in the States without citizenship, and so she had to stay in school in order to eventually get her citizenship. So she did her master's degree, you know, and she was in her PhD, and it was weird. It was just like, yo, E.T., I don't know how it happened, but it was like, yo, E.T., my wife is going to get her degree before you get her, yours. Right? I'm an American citizen. Like, I had already been in the program for a few years, and, you know, she, and, and it was, I don't know, but have you ever heard, like, you know when it's your time? Like, you know it's that moment. It's like, enough is enough. I can't tell you. People have asked me before, Eric, when you get your PhD? I'm like, I'll, I'll get it done. E.T., how far are you in the process? Finish all my coursework. I just got to write the dissertation. But it was something about that night that was different. It was almost the end of the year. And I remember Carl, listen to me very closely, guys. I'm being real with you. I didn't even have a conversation with Carl. Like, we never even talked about it afterwards. I never said anything to him about it. But I felt like I felt this, this guilt. I felt, I felt like this embarrassment. Like, and for real, he wasn't like speaking directly to me. He was just saying, you know, AE, hey, I think my wife's probably gonna finish her degree.